So once we talk about the prop shaft, getting it set up, we're going to mount that prop shaft to the engine. Then we're going to take that, that engine and prop shaft and mount it to the frame. Once we have it on the frame, then we're going to talk about wiring and about how to connect your battery, especially if you have an electric start. If you don't have an electric start, this, is, this wouldn't concern you. Um, and then we're going to take the throttle cables and the clutch cable and attach those as well. So we're going to have everything up and running just like the prototype that I flew in the video. I just want to talk again about the cog wheel and make sure this is clear. You mount your um, prop shaft here and I will cut this off. This is one that I actually made a mistake but I'm going to use it for a demonstration here. So I would mount that here. Before I put that on, now if I had that close enough, I wouldn't have been able to slide that on. But since this one's too far away, I can slide this on without taking it off. But if you've done this correctly, this inch and a half shaft here would be a little bit lower. So that you would actually have to mount this cog wheel first so it would just barely fit in behind the clutch. Because when I go to put this on, as you'll be able to see, it's going to be way too far away for this to mount. So if I start bringing this around, it's not going to mount. I'd have way too much tension. So if I had that bolted in, it wouldn't mount. It'd get about halfway. So I'm too far away. I'm about half inch to a quarter inch being too far away. So that's important that you get that the right length. So four bolts that just bolt down here and I'll show that to you later on and then the muffler itself you want some sort of ring some sort of pipe clamp and those slide down here on top of the prop shaft so that the muffler can mount mount to it but since I don't have that bolted in right right now I'm not gonna I'll show you how it's mounted later on but you have these pipe clamps on so that you can mount the exhaust to the prop shaft and you can adjust this and move it around so that it fits on. So this will be mounted here with that uh, cog wheel on the front. So that's how it goes on, just like that. The second piece that I have is a motor mount. This is all this is, is just this is how I design the motor mount. So this would slide on to the inside bolt in and then I would mount it to the actual frame itself. So this is how I design the motor mount. On other ones that I've seen, they're not connected like this and I really like having this because it makes it so much easier to mount. This cog wheel is about 8 inches. So about 8 inches across. So that's it right there. That's how the prop shaft mounts to the motor mount, and then this right here would mount it to the frame. Just one solid piece across. I like that design a lot better than other ones that I've seen. Um, it's just much easier to mount it. Okay, so what I've done is I mounted the muffler or the exhaust to the prop shaft. And I turned the muffler enough to where it wouldn't hit the prop once the prop's attached. Now what I'm about to do is go in here and put on the belt. Get it to an angle so that you can see. And I've also put the motor mount on. So, um, but I'm about to put the belt on the pulley. And this is the critical part. You want to make sure your distance is is exact. Make sure it's on the um, clutch. I'm going to roll this around and it should slide right on if it's the right distance. And that's extremely important. I probably snug enough or it'll be too tight you won't even be able to get it on. It's about 
five eighths of an inch between the um, cogwheel and the clutch. And that's extremely important to know. Otherwise, your belt will be too loose or it won't be tight enough. First thing we'll do is mount the motor mount in. Sometimes it's easier for me to do that. And uh, do a little portion of the prop shaft. So now you can see how the motor mount mounts it up. All these are lock nut. Side here, I've just got two bolts right here on this side. Here's the tricky part. That's right. There we go. That's All right, so the motor mount was attached to the prop shaft here, mounted it, mounted it, and tied it, or I'm about to tie it down. So that's what holds the motor on here. It also is held in place. So there's essentially four bolts holding that motor on. So the prop shaft's mounted here, it's also mounted down here, closer to the engine. All right, so what I've done. So I've attached this universal throttle cable that I bought at Home Depot and I'll show you the package in just a little bit. What I've got to do is get the spring in place. There we go. So there's the choke spring to pull it back down so it retracts. Now I've just got to mount it into here to hold it in place. Alright, so here's the throttle cable. I'm going to bring that up. This is one of those universal throttle cables, so I'm going to run it right through there. Once it attaches, I'm going to bring it up here and mount it in. So that should be good right there. Hold it in place so it doesn't move around. Test it out real quick. And this is the throttle cable that I've mounted up here to. Yeah, that's good. that'll go full throttle. And just as long as it bottoms out each time, that should be good. These are universal throttle cables. This is one I've got for the clutch here. This is exactly what I used in the video. And then there's the throttle. So that's what I was reaching back and touching. You can buy these at Home Depot. I'm going to turn this one into a mouth throttle. All right, so what I've got here is this one goes out to the ignition coil uh, or the magneto. So that's going to go around over there. This one here um, goes to the starter. So it's my positive that goes to the starter. And then this one here grounds out to the starter. So I'm going to ground that one out to the starter. And this wire here grounds the battery over here. I'm going to ground it over here to this bolt. Um, so that grounds out the battery and the only other one I have is this one here and that's the positive that goes to the battery Okay, let me explain the switching here. So I've got this one protected so that would kill the engine So it wouldn't have any impact. You could still try to start it, but the engine just wouldn't start So this kills the engine here um, Notice how I've got it. Notice how I've got it protected. I didn't want to accidentally hit that in air and have the engine turn off so what I did is I reversed the switch so that you have to pull this down and then switch it to kill the engine so you'll notice this top wire here let me switch it back this top one right here runs out to the magneto but if you didn't want your switch reversed like that that would actually go to the on position which you probably can't see it but that says off right there so I put the magneto one to the off position so I could protect the switch so I didn't have to worry about accidentally turning off the engine um, when I'm running or something to have something hit it so I could protect that switch. And then this bottom wire here runs out. That's the ground that goes to the engine. So that's how I've got the kill switch set up. Over here I've got red wires. I don't know if you can see it. That's a red. Both of my positive wires are running to this here. So one is going to be the positive and it doesn't matter which order. One is going to, one of these positives is going to run to the battery and the other one's going to run to the starter. So when I hit that, it'll, it'll crank it. It'll give it a good crank. Now just in case you don't know what a magneto is, 
or ignition coil. This is the ignition coil right here. So I'm just going to put this, slide this bad boy on. There, there's that one wire I was referring to going to the ignition coil. Okay, <clears throat> this is my bracket here that I made. It's probably an eighth of an inch thick. It's just aluminum, but you can find it at any hardware store. I bent it. I've got one loop below to hold the battery in place and then this loop around it. And I just formed it around the battery that I was gonna use. And then I can just simply slide this battery into place. And I, and then I mount the positive here. Take the negative, mount it, which is just ground to the engine itself. I also have a strap that goes over this, so when I'm flying, I don't have to worry about it flying out. All right, same thing on the gas tank, same type of mount. So I've just put some rivets in. I don't know if you can see those, but there's the rivets. So not the best design. I should have um, ground that down. I did a little bit with a file, so I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, contacted me and then I just put a base plate in here to hold those together so this set really thin aluminum you could have done this with straps I just wanted something a little bit more secure I'm gonna grab the gas tank and then throw that in there all right here's the gas tank you can put it down in and strap it down um, all I've done here is I just simply simply snap that together so that those two connect and then you'd want to do something with those lines so they're not out out and about carburetor button down here in the bottom. Hopefully I've got enough gas. There's just air going through there right now. Don't know that. Alright, I've got some gas going in there. Alright, we're going to try to crank this bad boy again. Put another battery on there, but I don't think it's got much of a better charge. We're going to try it. Yeah. 